Hi, how you doing? Okay, this is uh, like a part two to um, the other video called the Who Are the Black People in the Bible? So in the first video, Who Are the Black People in the Bible? Um, I go over... It goes over real heavy about how no, how all the gene all the genealogy of the Bible is uh, from the table of generations, which is Genesis chapter ten, which go over the three sons of Noah, Ham, Shem, and Japheth. It it makes it so everybody in the Bible that has a genealogy is is uh, it you can take it to to one of those three sons. So everybody in the Bible is related to Ham, Shem, or Japheth. You know the the people that have a genealogy. So of those, Ham, Ham is the black people. Okay, so um, I won't go into who Japheth and Shem are, but right now we're talking about who are the black people. Just real, real quick though, it's relevant. Shem are the uh, the Hebrew people. So uh, um, the, the son Judah, Judah was from Shem not from Ham. Judah was from Shem. But let's see what happened. So one thing is uh, the Black Light Fellowship uh, has that the book that I talk about in the first video where they show that black people tended to call themselves names based on their dark skin. Uh, Ham is, is a good example of that. Ham means hot. like the, like the, Because of the heat of Africa, their skin is black. Ethiopia means burnt face peoples. Those are classic examples. So Ham means hot. So Ham are the descendants of of, uh, of the black people. So some people's Bible, the King James Version, calls Ethiopia Ethiopia. But some Bible translations um, call Ethiopia Cush. Cush is one of the sons of Ham. It is the first one mentioned, and the son, uh, Genesis 10, verse 6, and the sons of Ham, Cush, and Mizraim, and Phut, and Canaan. So the, the first sons of Ham, so Noah's son Ham, the, the black one, has uh, Cush uh, and Canaan, are both from Ham, Cush and Canaan. Okay, so then, uh, first, uh, I'd like to mention that as far as these days, the last days, some one of the signs of the time in Revelations 2, 9, it says there will be those that say they are Jews but are not. And um, there's uh, many scripture references, and we've all heard them about how the tribes would be lost. So people's one of the signs of the time is that people don't know who they are. So you need to be skeptical and, and use critical thinking when people tell you who's who in the Bible. Because... It's a sign of the times that there would be confusion about that. So one of the jobs of the Elijah, Mr. Armstrong, is to turn the hearts of the children to the fathers and the fathers of the children. Uh, Malachi 4, verse 5 and 6. And uh, so one of the big things about Mr. Armstrong, the Elijah, Briley Slossia, is he, t he uh, identifies who's who and uh, as far as the tribes. Okay? So... Uh, Anyway, so one thing that we see is in Genesis chapter 13. I'll try to make this quick. This is just, uh, this isn't the details or anything. This is just a, a reference to, to the names. So in Genesis 13, um, Abram, so the, the promised land, Remember no, uh, Moses and the Promised Land and all that that we've all heard of. That that uh, it's some of those promises are made way back in Abram's day. Abram changing his name later to Abraham. So Abraham's day, Gen Genesis thirteen one says, and Abram went out up out of Egypt, he and his wife and all that he had and Lot with him into the south. And then skipping down to verse seven. And there was strife between the herdsmen of Abram's cattle and the herdsmen of Lot's cattle. And the Canaanite and the Perizzite dwelled then in the land. 
So the Parasite and the Canaanite, they're just kind of always lumped together. So it's the land of Canaan. We, we, we remember this. So I just established Canaan was the son of Ham. So the Canaanites are a black people. And uh, so Abram lived in the land of Canaan. Okay. Um, but of course, Abram himself came from Shem. So then... Um, So uh, Canaan, it says in Genesis 10, 6, is the reference to that, that Canaan is the son of Ham. Okay, so then in Genesis 15, 18 through 21, the end of Je Genesis chapter 15, it goes into more detail about where this promised land is, where the land of the Canaanites. In the same day, the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, Unto the, thy seed I have given this land from the river Egypt unto the great river, the river Euphrates. The, Ke the Kenites. The Kenites are of uh, Keturah, who are the, uh, known to be the people of Midian. And the Kenizzites. And the Cadmonites. So that's in verse all, all in verse nineteen. If you look up those names, it just uh, it'll just tell you they're they're of uh, uh, the people of Canaan. They're just Canaan people, and the and the Hittites. So it lists lot lots of names, um, the Hittites, the Parasites, the Reef Reefames. Um, that they're all just kind of lumped in just to different Canaanite people. Um, but some of them it's easier to identify. The Amorites in uh, 10.16, it makes clear that Amor the Amorites comes from uh, Can Canaan, who came from Ham. The Canaanites, we already said they're from, from Ham. In 10 verse 6, we see that, uh, oh, that, uh, in 10, I'm sorry, in, in 10 verse 16, it establishes that the Girgashites are from Ham. In uh, ten sixteen, it also mentions the Jebushites are from Ham. So this list of people of of this land, they're all people that are either known as Canaanites or you can directly descend them right to Ham. So they're all just a bunch of black people. Okay, Genesis thirty eight. Okay. Genesis 38, verse 2, it says, And Judah saw, so Judah is from Shem. Okay, not a black person. And Judah, a brown person, but... And Judah saw there a daughter of a certain Canaanite, whose name was Shua. And he took her and went in unto her. Okay, so he, so Judah liked Shua, who was a Canaanite. So he liked a black woman named Shua. Okay. And she conceived and bare a son, and his name was Ur. And then she conceived again and bare a son, and his name was Onan. And then she conceived again, and that son's name was Shelah. Okay. So, he's, so he has three sons by this black woman, Ur, Onan, and Shelah. Okay. And then in verse 6, he takes another wife, Tamar, who's black, but it doesn't matter because he doesn't have any children by her. So... Ur was the eldest son of Judah. So the Ur, Onan, and Shelah are half black. Half brown, half black. Okay? And Ur was his eldest son. But Ur was wicked, and so, so he didn't care about him. He liked Onan, the next one down. And he wanted Onan to... So... Uh, To make this quick, I won't always reference which verse. This is all just chapter 38 of Genesis. So he said, Onan, go, ha go, go marry um, your brother's wife and raise his kids. So his kids that would be half brown, half black. And go, go raise his kids and marry her. And, and uh, when, he, when he had sex with her, he wouldn't, um, he wouldn't come inside of her. And this made Jah mad. Jah wanted him to make babies with her, but he he did, he kept coming on the ground instead, and that made Jah mad. So Jah killed Onan. Okay, 
Uh, but but then so that just leaves Sheila, so Judah's son Sheila, who's who's a uh, of a, his mom was black and his dad was uh, Judah, who's brown, and he he he, uh, he said he wants Sheila to. He's worried about who Sheila's gonna make make a baby with, and he ends up. Uh, so then Tamar, his wife that that Judah didn't have any babies with. He wanted her to to make babies with Sheila, but the way she dressed, he thought he thought she was a whore, and so that would be shameful. But it was too late in verse eighteen, um, and he gave it to her and came in unto her, and she conceived by him, and she arose and went away and laid by her veil from her and put on the garments of her widowhood, and and uh, then. And he returned to Judah and said, I cannot find her. And also the men of the place said, There was no harlot in this place. They're like, oh, what, what harlot are you talking about? Not a whore. He called her a harlot. Who is this harlot you're talking about? He misjudged her and thought she was a harlot. And Judah said, Let her take it to her, lest he, we be shamed. Behold, I sent this kid, and thou hast not found her. And, and it came to pass about three months after that it was told Judah, saying, Tamar, thy daughter-in-law, hath played the harlot, and also, behold, she is with child by whoredom. And Judah said, Bring her forth, and let her be burnt. He was going to kill Tamar, because now, now she was pregnant. It was too late. But she uh, brought forth, she sent to her father-in-law, saying, By the man whose these are, I am with child. And she said, Discern, I pray thee, whose are these? And so and she's like, oh, I'm, I'm pregnant by them. And Judah acknowledged them and said, She hath been more righteous than I, because of that I gave her not to Selah my son. And he knew her again no more. And it came to pass in the time of Tephel that, behold, twins were in her womb. So she was pregnant with twins. And took upon, so she was a, a black woman, and she was pregnant by someone that was half black, half brown. So that's almost all black with a little bit of brown. A third, two thirds black, uh, one third brown. And she had two sons, the twins, and it was uh, far as. And the twins that she had was Fares and Sarah. So for the rest of the Bible, if you're trying to figure out who the people of Judah are, and of the 12 tribes, Judah becomes the largest tribe. Notice that everybody in the Bible always has this tendency to go south all the time. You know, the southern part. Judah's the southern tribe. You know, the darker skinned people always go south. And the lighter skinned people always go more north. The tribe of Judah there becomes the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom later on, and uh, and the southern kingdom is the tribe of Judah, and the northern kingdom is, or is the other tribes, and the king is in, in Jerusalem who's from Judah and, and Judah's I mean from yeah he's from um, Jeru he's from Judah he lives in Jerusalem which is right in between the northern and southern kingdom but the king owns all of it and. Um, and Judah is the largest tribe. It's much larger. Most of the Hebrews are from Judah. Okay? So it's really important who the genetic people are of Judah. So if you're going to figure out, try to figure out who the people of Judah are in the Bible, it's uh, the children of Phares and Sarah, which is the end of chapter Genesis 38. Okay? So you already knew that because in Genesis chapter 46 verse 12 it recaps that whole thing it says and the sons of Judah Ur and Onan and Shelah remember the three sons and Phares and Zerah so Ur and Onan and Shelah were the the first children he had but Ur was wicked and Onan was killed because he he wouldn't 
uh, come inside of his wife. And then there was Sheila, but Sheila had uh, sex with uh, with Tamar and had twins, Phares and Zerah. So the children of Judah are Ur and Onan and Sheila and Phares and Zerah. You know who all those people are now. But Ur and Onan died in the land of Canaan. And the sons of Phares were Hezron and Hamul. Okay, so, so the ones we care about, like I said, are Phares and Zerah, and the sons of them were Hezron and Hamul. Okay, so 46, so that the, the children of Judah are the children of Hezron and Hamul, to make it simple. Of course, they're two-thirds black and one-third brown, but they always go into the south, where, you know, so they're making babies with black people because they live in a black people land and everybody's black the Canaanites and the southern land and all that. Okay? So now, so we've established that Judah of the 12 tribes is the darkest skinned people. They're the black people of the, you know, there's there's still, there's still the, the even darker skinned people because they're part brown, but they're, but they're, uh, they're black people. If you saw them today, you would say that they're black. The largest tribe, Judah of old times, you would have said they're black, and they definitely were darker skinned than the other Hebrews. Something interesting is to now we go to, to Jesus. Now we know that Jesus was from the tribe of Judah. And in Ma uh, Matthew chapter 1, it goes over his genealogy, but if you look at it, it's actually the genealogy of, of Joseph, isn't it? Um, so it's interesting that in uh, Luke chapter 3, it goes over the, it goes over the genealogy of Mary says the genealogy of Mary mother of Jesus so fine it's like oh well good because if Jesus was born of a virgin birth and he wasn't really related to Joseph so why are we why would we care about Joseph's genealogy but in Luke chapter 3 verses 23 through to the end of it it, it goes it goes over the genealogy of Mary now that we care about and here we'd say, it says, it's going back further and back further. You don't want to hear me mention all these names, because that's much later. And then, so then, which was the son of Amanadab, which was the son of Aram. So we're in verse 33, which was the son of Esram. Okay, Esram is, it means Ezron. How we said, the, the sons of, uh, of, uh, the twins were, um, were Ezron and Hamul. So that's, that's who we care about, Ezron and Hamul. In the New Testament, you're used to that. It does like, it does like a Greek version of the name, so they're, they're close, but always a little bit different. When it says the son of Ezron, it means, it means Hezron. So it says, which was the son of Ezron, which was the son of Phares, which is one of the twins, which was the son of Judah. So Mary was from Judah, you know, the beginning Judah, then Phares, which was one of the twins, then Ezram, which was Phare, which was one of the twins, and then Aram, and then moving on. So Jesus was, uh, was from Judah because of Mary, who was from this lineage. So Jesus was from the, this, this black people. That, and, and so when you read the, when you read the Bible, now that you know this much, when you read the Bible, just notice that Judah always has this tendency to go south. And then when a Solomon, who's from the tribe of Judah, he owns all the land going up north and south, all the way down into Ethiopia, and he gives Ethiopia to his son, the, the son of uh, Queen of Sheba, because he gets Queen of Sheba pregnant, and that becomes the first emperor of Ethiopia. So he owned Ethiopia and he gave it to him. And it's because Judah was a black people thing. 